Hello. I could eat about a million and a half of these. Well, nobody's perfect. Welcome to the It's a Drama podcast. Daddy, I love you. My mother thanks you. If you can't say something nice. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Hello, welcome back to the second half of the It's a Drama podcast. Um, this is a continued um, half of the episode we did last week, yeah. where we were talking about um, bullying and being rejected by our friends um, and being pushed out of our social circle. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, where we were when we left off was we were talking about um, how you need like love and support from your family and friends around you yeah. when you're being bullied and in yeah. a situation where you're being pushed out of your social circle. Yeah. We were talking about cyberbullying, weren't we? Yeah. And the definition of cyberbullying. Yeah. And um, what I said was um, when you look online, the definition of cyberbullying is when you send, post or share some personal or private information about someone else, causing them embarrassment and humiliation. Yeah. And um, yeah, if you listened last week, you'll hear that's exactly what happened. Yeah, to me in my social, um, in my private Facebook group that yeah. I was part of, um, and we were talking about how um, the biggest, well, the biggest, the biggest help I suppose is to share that information yeah. with someone that you feel safe, be that a family member, a a, a good friend, um, mm-hmm. a teacher, a mentor, anyone yeah. really, isn't it? Is just to share it, you know, just to get it off your chest and share it. Don't keep it to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, because, yeah, and so what I wanted to go back to was that how um, the points that people say to um, when you are, when you do experience something like this, the points that you, you not the points, so what's the word called, you know, the um, the steps you go yeah. through. Um, the first one is don't react, don't retaliate and overreact and fight back in a calm manner. Well, what I did when that happened to me, the first thing I did was I messaged the person privately which I wish she'd done to me, you know, yeah. I wish she'd just sent me a message and said, listen, Liz, I yeah. think your stuff's crap and you shouldn't have written that. And I don't agree. You know, I would have preferred yeah. that rather than this massive big. Well, she'd been a mentor as she was, had been to you. Mm. She would have come to you and said, look, you made a mistake. Um, I think you should change this. Mm. Um, and this is what you can do to fix it instead of being completely childish and unprofessional mm. and just going and telling all the other kids in the playground how rubbish you are mm. kind of a thing no mm. you know spread this rumor around liz has done this liz has done mm. that you know get it around um it's just so yeah childish. fight back in a calm manner and so yeah i would suggest that you do that is just yeah. trying and, and get hold of this person privately and just say look what you've done has hurt me it's you know it's 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 it was unnecessary now when i did that she didn't want to talk about it which is is usually the case with people who um are very mouthy online and feel very safe to go and and say nasty things online when it comes to speaking to them in person they haven't usually got the um they almost find a voice they don't they find a voice that they'd never have in real life yeah exactly because they're just hiding behind their profile you know um knowing that you'd never be able to get to them yeah so they're not scared of you as such, um, they just they think they can say whatever they want, you mm. know, and they don't actually see the effect it has on people. No, like no, if they you don't. said that to their, someone's face, you'd see the physical effect. Yeah, and what kind of process they're going through. Um, like when 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 you tell them that, yeah, but they don't see that on online. You know, you just send the message. and It's like, yeah, there we go. They've got it out of there. Um, I don't know how they're going to react. You know, mm. all you see is the reaction they post. Mm. You know, and you can't hear expression in no. a comment, kind of a thing. You know, no. So, um, I find almost cyberbullying can be a lot worse. Um, obviously not physically because bullying physically, you know, you hit someone and stuff like that. It's but just as bad, though. I think it's just as bad. Yeah, well, it know? is because, like, what is it? The expression "sticks as stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me." Um, I don't think that's true. Um, mm, it's not true. Definitely not true. You know, there's there's an there's a quote that says sticks and stones will break my bones, um, but words will break my heart. Mm. Um, and I think that is very true. You know, um, when someone says something horrible about you, it really sticks with you. You know, especially mm. online, mm. it's it's horrible. Cyberbullying is horrible. Mm. So it's physical bullying. Yeah. you know, real life. But so going back to the um, 
You know, the other thing I did as well, which really, really helped, and it took me two weeks to do this. Yeah. This is how, this is how long it took me to do this. I just blocked that person. Yeah. I just cut off, you know, I just cut off contact with that person. Yeah. Obviously I'm still going to see them on, uh, in the, what's the word, you know, the internet world or yeah. because obviously, you know, they're, they're around, but it's just, you don't need someone like that in your life. No. If it's making you feel like your stomach just, Ooh, you know, it re just yeah. literally clenches when you see their name. Then, God, get 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 them out of your life. You know, yeah. it's yeah. you've tried to make friends, you've tried to resolve things. They don't want to know. Just say goodbye and block. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, just yeah. just move on. And um, yeah. yeah, so that would be another piece of advice as well. As if if it happens to you, it's just really just if you've tried to resolve it, it doesn't. It, you can't come to any terms of agreement that, you know, I did it because of this and I think you should have done that, then just move on and mm -hmm. don't let it define you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to say about as well is because this is tied to you with your, um, the, the way that you were rejected with your friend, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Sam. Yeah. And, there's an author called... Not his a real name, by the way. No. Amy Morin has written... Uh, she's a fabulous. Uh, she's brilliant. I love her. And she's written lots of good books. And one of the books that she's written um, is Five Ways Mentally Strong People Deal With Rejection. Yeah. So I will link to that in the show notes at the bottom. Um, but the number one is... I'll just quickly run through them. But number one is admitting that you're sad and acknowledging those emotions. Yeah. Which we talked about earlier with you, didn't we? You mm -hmm. know... Not just thinking, oh, this is just, oh, it's nothing. You know, it's just, this isn't worth bothering anyone with. It's like, it's made you sad, Sunny. Yeah. If it makes you sad, you just, you come to, you, you recognize that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And by recognizing it, you can move on mm -hmm. and be compassionate with yourself. Yeah. yeah. Would you agree? I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's about correct. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Number two, um... Yeah, it's about, she just said, push your limits and making yourself more vulnerable. I don't know. Oh, I suppose I can, the way I can say this is the day that that happened to me, the day that that girl put that thing on the, on Facebook about me, um, in front of all those people, like I say, saying that I was an effing idiot and all the rest of it. And I was worthless basically. Um, what I did do was went out and posted something of mine on my on my page and nothing to do with this, but I just kept going and just put myself out there. It would have been so difficult. And I was so, so tempted to just yeah. think, right, that's it. I'm coming off Facebook. Yeah. I'm coming off Facebook. I'm coming off everything. It's just all a load of crap. It's just affected me. It's just nasty and I'm coming off it. But you know what? No, because why are you stretching like that? I'm just stretching. Yeah. yeah. Carry on. But no, no um, it's, I suppose if you if you give up, you've just given them exactly what they wanted kind of thing, you know? Yeah. You've just, you've let them overcome you. Yeah. Yeah, and you've admitted to defeat. And also being vulnerable, but yeah, but ju yeah, exactly, admitted to defeat, and you don't want to do that. No. And you just always don't, you just want to keep being the person you are, yeah. and you have got to be vulnerable. It's bloody horrible when something like that happens, and you think, you just want to shut yourself off, never ever turn that computer on again, and have nothing else to do with it. But why? Why should you be like that? You know? You, yeah. It's not going to... I need social media for my business. Yeah. Lots of people need social media and keeping to keep in contact with people and their other friends. So, yeah. So being vulnerable and just pushing, you know, just keep going, yeah. you know, just push yourself out there and just think, no, I'm sorry, you're not going to get to me. Otherwise, they'll just keep doing it to more people because they know that they can get away with it kind of thing. You know, they know that they can beat someone down and not destroy them, but just make them feel defeated you know mm. um and if you show them that it hasn't affected affected you you know they'll soon get bored and move mm. on and it's just it's just the best way to deal with it i suppose isn't it just carry on like it hasn't happened mm. like you said don't react don't overreact to it and just just not let it go always remember that it happened you know and um just treat yourself just treat yourself kindly yeah and treat yourself like it hasn't happened. Do you know what? Um, do you know what I mean when I say negative self-talk? I suppose it's when you talk about yourself in a negative way. 
in in your to yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Negative self talk. Yeah. yeah. So I don't mean like talk, but like say to other people. No. Oh. Talk. Talk. Talk about you. So like, you're in a room and like, I don't know. Uh, you're singing, say, and after you finish, you go, "Oh, that was rubbish." Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Negative self talk, which we do do a lot. You know, you can't <laughs> so help it. Of, no, you, you can't, can't help, help it. it. But um, It'd be a bit weird if you everything you did it was like that was brilliant that was brilliant you know yeah otherwise well, it would be lovely if it could be like and, that though but yeah well yeah but you know when that happened and I bet when it happened to you as well mm-hmm. and when it happens to anyone the first thing you do is your little negative self talk kicks in and it's like yeah well, you start being like oh maybe I'm weird I know exactly you know? maybe I don't, maybe I'm not a good person yeah maybe around. I am a rubbish writer maybe I shouldn't I've got no right to be yeah you know putting myself out there and saying and and giving my opinion on the internet. Mm. you know and and but recognizing that you're doing that and it takes a huge huge skill and yeah, something that I'm really I battle with all the time and I'm sure you do too mm. um but just recognizing that you're doing that and just saying you know no she, she you know they always say talk to yourself like you would talk to your best friend yeah and that is so true isn't it it's just like mm-hmm. just tell yourself no just because that person said this about you or is doing this to you doesn't, it's not true. You know, yeah. you are a good person. You're a, a funny guy. You're popular. You're a nice, kind, beautiful person, Sonny. <laughs> you are, you are. And, you know, it's just don't let, don't let that one experience define you. No. And, and the same goes. Same with you. Yeah. yeah. Don't ever, don't ever stop writing. No. And the yeah. same for anyone out there who's going through this. Do not do not tell yourself, oh, this person is right, you know. I shouldn't be doing this. I am ugly. I am fat. I am talentless. Yeah. I am this. All those horrible things that people can say to you. Don't let, don't let that, no. don't let that get to you. Yeah. And worst of all, don't tell yourself that it's true. Yeah. And don't try and mold yourself into someone that you're not in an attempt to impress no. these people. No, exactly. Because you're 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 your own person, you know. Um, what what is it they always have on that sign outside that church down in the village? Oh yeah. Um, you're you're born in as original. Don't die as a copy. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's true that, isn't it? Just don't feel like you're weird or silly or stupid or not cool enough, you know. Mm. Um, because that's an opinion of one person who's a very silly, you know. Um, insecure person yeah yeah and there's always people out there who want to be your friend you know mm. there's all you're always like you said you'll always find your people eventually yeah, yeah. you know you um, will always find your yeah. people and, and sometimes you find them in the most you know bizarre places yeah. you know yeah yeah it's walking along there's a little man sitting under a tree yeah hello this is, uh, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um and the last one from amy morin with her um five ways mentally strong people deal with rejection is she says to learn from rejection and to turn it into an opportunity for self-growth so I just want to know from you I'll tell you in a minute but how did you how have you have you learned anything from what happened to you you know this guy rejects you he pushes you out of your social circle you come back from a year around the world and he doesn't want to be your friend anymore he's making you feel like a piece of dirt you know like you're Mm -hmm. not worthy of his friendship yeah. How have you learned from that? Have you learned anything from that? Yeah, I, su- I suppose I've learned pretty much everything that I've said in this podcast almost, you know? Yeah. Um, I've learned that, you know, um, hmm, I'll put it into words. I suppose I've learned that you're, you don't always have to impress everyone kind of a thing. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you don't always have to be um on on top of your game, you know. Um everyone's friend. Or... You don't have to no, you don't have to always impress everyone. Mm. Um because there's always I suppose it's like this 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 comment, you know, talk to your child about how close friendships are far more valuable than being popular. You know? I think I've learned that yeah, you don't that's need so true. hundreds of friends. I know. You just need a few great ones. Yeah, you do. Because I, w- I was always like, oh, you know, I just want loads of friends. I just want loads of friends. Mm. Um, and I just r- realised that because this guy did this to me, mm. it made me come closer to the friends that I did have. And then that made me realise that, you know, a few good friends are better than a hundred 
fake ones. That's so true. You know, it's so true. Yeah. You know, Tessa said to me the other day, she's oh, I, I Tessa's wish. Tessa's my sister, by the Tessa, way. Tessa, yeah, my daughter, 14 years old. And she said, um, she'll kill me when she knows I've quoted her on this, but she won't listen anyway. But she goes, oh, you know, I just, I wish I just had loads of friends. I wish I, and she's got three exceptional friends. Yeah. I mean, they are just lovely. So mm. close to her, aren't they? Yeah. But I reckon it's because of the whole social media thing and the films and you see all these big gangs of people and we've got loads yeah. of friends. And you think, you know, yeah, that's that's how it should be. Um, luckily, as an adult, you don't really. I mean, I've got I've got probably three people, four yeah. people. Right, yeah. Same as me. Yeah. Yeah. But that's some people only need one friend. Yeah. As long as that person would be there for them come hell or high water, that's a good friend. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's a really good point. It's just, you know, if you've got that one good friend or two good friends or whatever, if you're lucky enough to have two, three good friends, yeah. that is enough. It is. You don't need to impress. Like you say, you don't need to be worrying about keeping people who are not your friends happy and impressing them and being part of their social circle it's like no it's fine i don't need to do that yeah that's a really good point actually yeah so yeah anything else to talk about yeah um i've got this this on my notes here um this is just it says science explains helps explain why kids get rejected by their peers so why this kind of happens in the first place um i suppose this is more like from six years old to 13 years old, mm. I suppose. So mm. if you've got a kid that old, um, um, just, just bear with me because there's a few really long <laughs> names here Go that on. look like they're Spanish or French or something. So it says, we find that the rejected child's behavior does not lead directly or inevitably to rejection, explained Francisco Sean Garcia Bassett a professor in the Department of Development, Educational and Social Psychology and Method Methodology 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 mm. at the Whatever. Jamum <laughs> First <laughs> University in Spain. Mm. Adding instead what actually leads to rejection are the rejectors' interpretations of the child's behaviour and whether they think it will have a negative impact on themselves or their social group. I don't get it. You don't? Okay, let me read it again. No, so, no, no, don't read it again. Just what does it mean? Instead of the massive... So, read it again. We'll find that the rejected child's behaviour does not lead directly or inevit inevitably to rejection. Instead, what actually leads to rejection are the rejectors' interpretations of the child's behaviour and whether they think it will have a negative oh. impact on themselves or the social group. So, like this person, that this this woman who you know, wrote the horrible post about you. Mm. So it's, it wasn't your behaviour that led to rejection. Right. It was her interpretation of your post. So do you understand? So it wasn't actually your post that was, oh, the, I get that that. was wrong. Yeah. It was her interpretation. Yeah. And she thought that it had a negative impact on herself and her social group. So she then went out to push you yeah, out of the right. circle. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Sunny. I'm not right. Jean, Professor Jean no, Garcia no. is right. How did you manage when I just said to you, do some research? You went in there for five minutes. You've come up with all this really good stuff. Just, How have you done that? Anyway, okay. <laughs> you, you know? Just a student. I'm impressed, yeah. yeah. Um, you know why that is correct? What's because, correct? well, so th tell me if I'm getting this right. Yeah. So I wrote a post. Mm -hmm. She didn't like what I'd written because she thought it reflected badly on her. Yep. She said to me, everything I've taught you, you've... Yep. Yeah, she mm -hmm. said that, Which didn't she? correct. It's written here. Yeah. yeah. She said, everything I've taught you, you've gone against. You're a liar. You're this. You're that. You're so a... she thought it had a negative impact on, on her. On her. Yeah. And, and yeah. her social group. Because she thought, you know, she taught you everything. Yeah. And all of a sudden she thought everyone's going to... But like no one else was going to see it because no one else thought it was bad. No. Um, but everyone, that was her interpretation of it. Yeah, it was her it. interpretation of your behaviour, which then caused her to push you out, which is the root of the problem. That is so interesting. Yeah. Isn't it? It is. And actually, when you look at that, it helps you to come to terms with why she did what she did. Yeah. Doesn't make it any easier for me. No. But, well, it, it does in a way, but now it, there's been a month or so past, so I can think straight, but at the time... Actually, that's really, really good advice. So let's turn it on you. Yeah. So how did your friend, what, what, how, why did he, why, what, taking that into consideration, why did he reject you? 
what behavior of yours did he see as a threat to himself and his group? I suppose um, we've got very similar personalities. You know, we like the very, we like the same stuff kind of thing. Mm. Um, we, uh, we had very similar friends. We had very all, we all had these, you know, we were all in the same friend group. And maybe he felt, okay, no, I know, I know what it is. Like you said it before. Yeah, I think we both um, know what it is. When I was away, mm. he was all of a sudden, because he was the only guy in the group. He was kingpin, wasn't he? Was he was king, kingpin. Yeah. King, <laughs> kingpin just means like, you know. He was kingpin. Um, co- cock of the group. Yeah. Um, and um, he just, you know, he had everything. He had all the attention. Um everything like that. And then as soon as I came back, it was like, oh gosh, I this sounds like I'm bigging myself no, up. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it it just, doesn't. I suppose he just thought all of a sudden there's another guy back in the group and he felt like his position was threatened. Threatened, yeah. 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 And then he was like, I'll push you out. You know, I'm going to yeah. push you out. Yeah. I'm not going to talk to you. Just get out and then that'll be my problem yeah. gone. And that was his interpretation yep. where all I wanted was just to be friends. Yeah. I just wanted to be exactly yeah. like it was. I didn't want to threaten his position. No. I just wanted to be his friend again, yeah. you know? And um, yeah, that was the problem. But does his interpretation. Yeah, exactly. Because he felt threatened by you. You know, he's also into drama. You're into drama. You, you, It was like, you know, it, all the other things that he's yeah. into. Um, well, I don't know if he is or not, but I'm yeah. just, is he? Um, kind of. Mm. Suppose mind you all your friends are aren't they so yeah, <laughs> but, yeah exactly but my friend I th- yeah I think what you're I think what you just said before is gold because it now enables you to stand back and think well actually it was nothing to do with me yeah. same as me it was nothing to do with me or my writing or my it was that person's interpretation of us yeah of who, uh, and please, if you are being, if you're going through the same thing, take this piece of advice and use it. It's their interpretation of yeah. what, of this, of your, of the situation. So in Sonny's case, it was your, he felt threatened. Yeah. You know, like you say, you're away for a year. He was kingpin. Yeah. And you've come back and it's like, damn it. Yeah. Okay. Well. Well, so yeah. I think to wrap it up, we'll read it one more time so that it sinks in. We find that the rejected child's behaviour does not lead directly or inevitably to rejection. Instead, what actually leads to rejection are the rejector's interpretations of the child's behaviour and whether they think it will have a negative impact on themselves Mm. or their social group. Yeah, yeah. So, So, yeah. So, to put it into plain English, I don't like what you wrote on your post. I think it's going to reflect bad on me because I didn't tell you the right stuff that you were yeah. supposed to write. So I'm going to call you an effing idiot and, and push you out of the social push group. Push you out of the social group. Yeah. I'm going to, yeah. yeah. And I'm going back to you. I was kingpin. You've come back. I feel threatened. I'm going to push you out of our social group. Yeah. Makes it a lot easier when you say it like that. Yeah, it does. Um, we've just had a little piece of paper put up by the sound engineer in the corner saying we've still got three minutes left. So I just want to... Um, two just, minutes left now. Two minutes left. Um, Sonny. Yes. What are you doing? I'm reaching over and looking at the timer. Okay. Um, so it actually says 50 seconds. Okay. Um, what are you reading at the moment? What am I reading? I am reading nothing at the moment because I just finished a book. Which one did you Last finish? Last night. Well, it was The Ranger's Apprentice. Oh, by, yeah. You uh, keep reading that, don't you? Oh, God. Not John Flanagan. Yeah. John Flanagan. No, it's not. Yes, it is John Flanagan. Yeah. <laughs> John Flanagan. The other one's a Chris Bradford. Okay, yeah. John Flanagan. Yeah. Yeah. Very okay, good and um, all right. So I'm just, I'm really like quite speechless because do you know what? Just doing this has really, really helped me yeah. come to terms with what's happened. Closure. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we just need closure, son. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing I was going to tell you as well is just please, if you are going through this and just talk to someone about it. Yeah. And just share share what you're going through. Talk to us about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. What's, just what's your email again? My email yeah. is Liz at it's a drama dot com. Yeah, so flick Liz at it's a drama dot com an email. Yeah. Um if you're going through something. Um 
you want to chat about it. It will be anonymous, if you know. Just, yeah, we would never. And um, we'd never obviously tell you. Um, and maybe we could discuss it on the podcast or something yeah. like that. And also, Probably won't get any emails, so don't count on it. <laughs> and also, if um, if there's anything else you'd like us to talk about or any subject that you want us to cover, yep. please just let us know and um, we can chat about it. Because you know what? Just talking about it. Look, look what we've learned in the last however long it's been. Yeah. You did really well on your research, Sonny. I must thank admit, you. I was I was impressed by that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, guys, thank you very much for listening and um, being with us today. And subscribe to us on iTunes. Leave a comment. Yeah. Five star review. Yeah, that'd be great. And until next time, we'll see you then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. 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 Thank you so much for joining us this week on the podcast. We have loved having you here. If you guys could subscribe to us on iTunes and leave us a five-star review. Oh yeah, that would be nice. That would be absolutely amazing. And make sure to share the podcast with your friends. And if you'd like to hop over to the blog, find one of the little boxes that ask you to drop your email. I will send you a newsletter every week letting you know when we've released our new podcast. That will go straight (laughs) into your inbox. So it's www.com. It's a drama.com. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see you next week for another podcast. Look forward to it. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.